Right, this time we're going to do a slightly harder example. It's exactly the same mechanism, still nucleophilic addition elimination, but this time we're doing it with ethanoic anhydride, this little molecule here, it's kind of like two carboxylic acids stuck together, almost. Rather than using ammonia, this time we're going to use ethyl amine, and we're going to produce a secondary amide. Now, the reason we produce a secondary amide but produced a primary amide in the first one is nothing to do with what we start off with. It's entirely to do with whether we react with ammonia when you get a primary amine or an amine when you get a secondary amide. Um, so the branch that comes off this nitrogen is entirely based on the branch that's already on the original nitrogen. And the only thing that the ethanoic anhydride cares about is rather than a chlorine being lost, we lose this whole ethanoate group, which then produces ethanoic acid rather than hydrochloric acid. Basically, rather than chlorine, we've got the CH3COO. So if we draw the mechanism for this one, and I'll have to see if I can work out a decent way to actually draw this well. At this point, and actually if I draw the next bit on as well, um, where shall I draw it? At this point, this could be exactly the same as ammonia and acyl chloride. But rather than having ammonia, I'm going to put the just realised something, that's methylamine, isn't it? Not ethylamine. Um, so rather than H, I've got CH3. That's all that's different. I've still got the lone pair, so the mechanism is going to be identical. And rather than having a chlorine here, I'm going to put the rest of my ethanoate group, if I could actually draw properly. So all the partial charges are the same. We're still going to have a delta plus carbon, a delta minus oxygen. We don't care about the thing that's singly bonded to the carbon. We're going to have the curly arrow going to attack the carbon, and we're going to break the carbon-oxygen double bond. So because we've got a lone pair on the amine going to the delta positive carbon, it's nucleophilic. And because we're breaking the double bond and we're just going to add something onto it and not release anything else, it's addition. And then so what we've got at this point and I imagine I'm going to draw this incredibly badly. So now I've just drawn this bottom part of the molecule, but a bit of a weird angle and bent. May need so I can stick on this. doing a really bad job of this today. That should be a single bond with a minus charge on the oxygen. And because my nitrogen has an extra proton on it, that's going to be positive. So we've also got a lone pair on there. So this is going to be the elimination section. So what we're going to eliminate, well, if we do the amine group first this time, we'll release the hydrogen. That's nice and easy. We'll reform the double bond to make this, that's nice and easy. So then what's the next thing that we're going to lose? Well, this bond here, because the carbon's getting its extra electrons pair from the oxygen, so it needs to lose an electron pair. It will give it to that oxygen. So again, that oxygen is really acting like the chlorine of the other one, but the oxygen also has other stuff attached to it. So if we look at what we formed, we haven't done anything with the methyl carbon bond, so that's still going to be that. We've reformed the double bond to the oxygen. 
And now we've bonded it to a nitrogen. We've lost one of the hydrogens. So it's only attached to now one hydrogen and a CH3. And the other thing that we've produced, the hydrogen from here and this whole CH3, C double O, O bond. Look at that, we formed a carboxylic acid. So this mechanism is identical to the last one, but rather than having a Cl, we've got the ethanoate group, and rather than having an H here, you've got a CH3 rather than an H. Simple as that.